Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drupal Camp LA 2010. My name is Doug Van. This is my website, DougVan.com, where I try to blog as much as I can. I did this one during the keynote, I think. Shouldn't be blogging during the keynote, but that's what I was doing. That was a good time, though. Um, check me out in my, in my contact form. Contact me. Um, anybody that submits a contact submission, just saying hi uh, today or tomorrow, I'll be drawing from that uh, quantity of people to give away two hours a free virtual Drupal training. We'll spend uh, maybe one hour here, one hour there, uh, hook up a go-to meeting or, and do some Skype uh, screen sharing or swap some links through a Skype chat. Whatever you want to do, we'll hook up and uh, just give you two hours of whatever you want to talk about. Drupal de module development, theming, scalability, whatever, whatever you want to talk about, two hours. Um, so if you leave a comment for me, it's a contact form at dougvan.com. And if you're watching this archive, go ahead and submit a contact and see if maybe win something too. Uh, if you're watching this video. So today's session is about the tips and tricks and modules you may not be using. And I uh, put together a little list here of some cool stuff. Things I do, things that, you know, if you know about these modules ahead of time, when you, when you spec a site out, you know, somebody, somebody comes to you, I want a site. Or maybe you want a site for your, your personal blog or an organization you work with or whatever. You, you come to Drupal for a reason. The goal of all this is for every one of you ideally is to develop a site or be a part of a team developing a site and there are there are 5,700 plus modules and um, a certain percentage of those apply to Drupal 6 and of that percentage a certain percentage of them are really good and really work so uh, and, and knowing the ones that are available to you and the ones that you know that are named in, in a way that you think you may have an idea what they do and then maybe the description of the project is really good too so if, if all if all goes super super well and you're really lucky You'll get the module you need to do the job you need done. But if you don't know about the module ahead of time, it's going to be virtually impossible to find it. Uh, despite that we have uh, good search mechanisms, better now than we did, you know, those of us who've been around for three or more years, you know, we, it's easier to look around the modules directory these days than it, is, than it has been. But still, the goal here is to expose you to some modules you can just tuck away and then bring them out of your pocket on the day that you need them. I'm going to start with menu block. And my example for menu block is going to be a site I launched just a few weeks ago, the uh, Northwest Women's Board, Northwestern University Women's Board, was a site that I did not design this. They had the design. I just gave them what they asked for. So don't judge this based on this gorgeous color scheme. Um, so they had a static site, and I, I built this for them. Uh, when you go to the scholarship section, here are submenus. Okay. Now this, this um, sometimes you hear it called um, secondary menu, you hear it called uh, subordinate menu, child menu, utility menu, different people call it different things. But the fact of the matter is that um, these nodes in, in the navigation structure, are these, these menu items, are, child, are children of this menu item here. And I'll demonstrate, I'll demonstrate that over here in the menu section. So this, this is my primary links. My primary links as rendered by the block interface not the primary links as rendered in the theme, because there's two ways to, to render the, the primary links. Um, uh, the theme defaults way up here, whereas the blocks interface, you can put it wherever you want it. So uh, I'll take a look at the menu structure here. When you look at the menu structure of this site, and on primary links, this is the menu blocks module. Um, this, this is core. This is core menu um, UI. But if you look over here at scholarship, you can see that there's three menu items indented. This is showing you the hierarchical structure of menus. The about us has bylaws, the programs has past programs, and then the uh, scholarships has uh, these three. And one of them even has a, a grandchild. Past scholars is a grandchild of scholarship. And then these three are children of scholarship. So they're, they, you know, they're, they're nested menu items. And if we had uh, Superfish installed, you could mouse over Scholarship, and you would see those three levels appear. And if you moused over Student Bios, you would see one more appear. That is not what the client used. In fact, usability experts are telling us that um, and accessibility and usability both are really, really frowning these days on, uh, on the mouse over uh, Superfish type menus. I'm, I don't know where to subscribe. Um, my clients aren't asking for it, so I haven't used it in a very long time. But the point here is these three menu items are children of these menu of that menu item. And then the goal, the, 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 the uh, result is that this area is dedicated to showing if there's no children, 
it shows nothing. If there are children, it shows this. And let's take a, let's take a closer look at the uh, at the history page. How how did we establish this to be the child of scholarship? When I edit this page, my menu section. This is vertical tabs. Modules you may not be using vertical tabs. Your your edit forms and your note add forms can become you know 30, 40 screens long. I wish I was exaggerating. Maybe I'm a little. Um, the the uh, vertical tabs takes the groups like the, the publishing section, the authoring section, the URL path settings. It takes all these, you know, about three, three inches each, maybe four inches each of real estate. And if you really want to do something with the path, click that, and then, and then you have access to edit it. And then the menu settings, which typically appears by default right below your title, uh, if, you want to, you know, if you want to make that change, click it here. So vertical tabs, you totally want to use vertical tabs. Uh, I use uh, Fusion Themes from the, the Fusion Skinner magazine theme from WebEnable, I'm sorry, well, I use WebEnable.com for all my development, but that theme comes from top-notch themes, and they, they rock indeed. So uh, the, menu, the menu item is history, as we knew, and here's the parent item is scholarship. Okay, so how did this, the, the history menu item, how did it become a child of scholarship? Right here. As opposed to making it a top-level item and putting it in primary links, in which case it would appear at the top, of all my pages throughout my website, I've assigned it to be a child of scholarship. So Drupal Core allows me to do that. And once I once I assign this this um, this um, relationship child child relationship, then when I'm looking at the page, this shows me that I'm in the, I'm in the second level of primary links. Now I could have uh, some some CSS here that kind of shades this membership right and kind of brings it down and maybe puts a little border or a gradient or something so I could keep the visual reference, the visual relationship alive throughout the navigation process. Uh, that was not the case in the static HTML version of this site and um, it didn't really have the budget for really you know better quality UI so uh, I didn't do that but if that's maybe something phase two that the uh, Northwestern University Women's Board would like to do I'm available to do that. Are you listening Northwestern University? Um, so, um, so that, that thought just came to me right now. So usability, keep your eyes on usability when you can. Um, so let's take a look at the configuration of this module. Uh, when you're looking at your blocks, and as we know, blocks appear in regions. There's your left region, your right region, although nowadays they're being called first, I'm sorry, left sidebar and right sidebar are the regions. Although any more these days, more themes are calling it uh, the first sidebar and second sidebar, because you may want to have a, and this is from your perspective, Left, le left, sidebar, left sidebar, left sidebar content. You have two sidebars on the left or right side of your content. Well, this is first and second, and then your main content. And if you put your second on the other side, you could technically call them left and right, but if they're both on the same side, calling them first and second makes more sense. So um, my theme calls them sidebar last. There's nothing in sidebars last right now. And then sidebar first is over here. But over here at the preface top, I believe preface top is where you find my um, instance of the block of the menu block. Um, subprime <laughs> preface top. I called it subprime. Nothing to do with mortgages. But um, th this block did not exist until I went up here and said add menu block. And you can't add menu block unless you have menu block installed. And when I configured that menu block, I said uh, here's what kind of a menu block you are. So here's the menu block UI. Um, you have no title. I don't need a title for the menu. When you see links, you know links are menu items. Um, the name is subprime, so when I can see it in my list, I can you know I can refer to it administer administrarily as subprime. Um, you are it's related to the primary links. It is related to the second level of the primary links. When I'm on the scholarships page, history is one of the options in in in, in the second level. Uh, and I don't go third. There are I saw, you saw at least one third level, a grandchild. Um, <sighs> at no place do I have third third. Uh, third generation showing up on a screen. They have a, another UI for that, another way I do that. Um, and there's lots of settings there. And it's a little wonky. Okay, Everything in Drupal is so like you, you can do it this way, but this way, and the use case here and the use case there. There are a lot of options in this module. I just want the second level to appear when it's a valid thing to happen. If this menu item has children, I want it there. That's your goal. There's a lot of configuration in here, and you're going to do a little bit of trial and error. I could do an hour on just this, but now at least you know the menu block is there, and it's an awesome, I mean, it's not an awesome UI, 
I mean, you're giving people, you know, this is this is where you are. And, and if you mouse over it and then it appears like a, a sucker fish, super fish, and then you click on that and it goes to that page, you don't you don't know any longer what else is related on that level. You got to go back. So I really hope that the menu block is something you're going to keep in your your bag of tricks and whip it out. And I'm telling you what, you, you, you you'll impress your clients with this. That, that's that's a that's a real nice. It's a, it's a win. It's it's an, it's an easy win. It's an easy show off idea. So that's menu block. Hooray for menu block. Um, boy, there was something else I just thought of a minute ago. A web form. Let me, I'm going to jump the gun. Who has used the web form module? Okay. Who has used Drupal's contact module to build a little contact form? Well, good. I'm glad. I, th I think I have more web forms than contact. Uh, once again, Drupal Core has, in its effort to be within reach uh, of um, the noob, you know, Dr Drupal tries to be something out of the box that people can run into and, and get, have some success with, but the contact module really fails to really be robust, and I, I guess it's good to have it there. I guess that's more of a political pondering than a functional ponder pondering. On DougVan.com, where you're all saying hello on my contact form, um, I hope you are. Uh, where's my site? I just, I've it's right here. Um, the the, um, the DougVan.com contact form where some lucky person is going to win two hours of virtual Drupal consulting. Um, it looks like a contact form. This is for anonymous users. Anybody, these are, this is always live. I have uh, you know, your name, the uh, nature of your inquiry, right? Uh, training request. Yeah, use that one. Use training request. And if, you haven't, if you've done something else already, that's fine. Uh, development request. Uh, Southeast right. Linux Fest comment. Uh, I, I'm keeping in contact with the attendees from Southeast Linux Fest. I'm, I've got some fun stuff going on there. And report errors. Find a typo or a page not found or an access denied or something wonky. Let me know about it. That's embarrassing stuff. Uh, your email address. Uh, I, I've done this contest in other places in San Francisco and stuff like that. People put in like bogus email addresses on this contact you know, to win. And I've had to like go like, you know, okay, I'll, I'll pick another one. Wow. I'll pick a third winner. And finally find somebody with a valid email address. So if you're putting in foobar at foobar.com, you're not going to win. I'm not going to track you down by IP. Okay, it was the fourth, fourth row, third seat. Okay, you, it must be you. If, if you do, who does? Huh? What is Fubar? I don't know. Then uh, if, if you are a Yanovich Rasputin Kubacheski at, at Yanovich Rasputin Kubacheski dot com, how about that? That's one you can't repeat. So, and then I've even got a file upload. Okay, the, uh, in the case of Linux Fest, um, I, there are some people I need files from. So I've opened up a file field in there. Um, this is a contact form, okay? But it's, it's using the web form module. And let me show you the behind the scenes of the web form module. The web form module is awesome. Um, it's 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 a piece of content that okay. Th this is a node, okay? It's it's a node just like a a blog post is a node, or a, a user profile is a node, or an image and an image gallery is a node. This is a node. Um, the whole form itself is a node. And when people submit uh, their hopeful opportunity of winning two hours of uh, training. Uh, what I have is a submission to that node. It's, you're not creating nodes with your submissions in the same way that contact form does not create nodes. But um, anybody that fills out a contact form submission in Drupal, the Drupal core contact, it just, it just it's lost in the ethos. If it doesn't get to your email address um, or if you delete it or if whatever is happening, your email is not configured properly on your server, um, it's just gone. These get logged. These get logged. I'll show you real quick. Form uh, configurations. Okay, view. Actually, no, what I got to do. I got to go over here. Web forms. So here are, I have two. I have two uh, web forms. This one's not published right now, but this is Doug. Here, here are submissions to the contactdougvan.com. And what do I have today? I have uh, uh, not since August second. Okay, I got to last. I got more of them. There we go. I've had uh, one, two, three, four people today, all just recently. Hmm, I wonder why that is. And um, let me refresh this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I, I got four. I have four submissions. They're locked in here, right? Um, it's, and I can, I can, I can, I can do. A, I can show a list, like analyze, analysis. Show me all the uh, submissions where the uh, nature of the inquiry. Is um, I'm sorry, that's going to be table view, isn't it? Um, uh, 
Or is it down? Or is it export? Download. Yes. Well, trust me, it's in there somewhere. I seem to recall there was a way to filter these, uh, the ones I'm looking at. I love, I love live TV. Um, table, download, table. What's it in the table? I don't want to give up. I just know it's in here. This is usually where someone in the audience says, oh, it's over there, dog. Okay, fine. Well, perhaps that's an ex uh, 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 this. So is the data that's in the form that you're creating and prompting for, is that going into the database? Or yes. All the, the reason you're able to see this right now is because it's in the Drupal database. And what, do you create custom fields in a new table? For I'll, sh I'll show you that, too. Yeah. And just, just for kicks, I wonder, oh. Um, let's see if I got more than four now, just keeping track on you guys. Um, yes, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, all right. I got another, another, winner, another lucky winner, perhaps. Um, let's go back and edit this form. So it's, it's called Contact Doug Van. Here's the text that appears above when you look at the form. And um, once you submit the form, it says, your message has been sent. Thank you. Okay. Now, ultimately, I could put a URL in here, node slash 80, or node slash 85, or a page slash thank you, whatever. And then once you submit the form, it'll automatically redirect to that page where I say, hey, thanks. And I try to, you know, obviously, I, I've detected. So Drupal knows you've, you've interacted with my site in a very real way, and I have a chance to maybe upsell something or encourage you to do something or, you know, so I've, I know exactly why you're on this page, because you just submitted a form. I can do something. This is where... Uh, Josh Ward would tell me that I have an opportunity to, uh, you know, do more in, in conversion on this. You know, I've got somebody asking questions. Let's upsell. Let's talk about business. And then your input formats, I can put a WYSIWYG in here. I can get jiggy with it. We should talk about WYSIWYG, shouldn't we? Which is what you get? Getting a CK editor and uploading images. Oh, man, that's an hour by itself, too. Okay. So uh, this is a CK editor, I believe. Um, so this, this, is, this is all the essential stuff here, but then the form components is what the gentleman was talking about. I was afraid I wouldn't have enough content for all this, this whole hour, but now I'm on the web form module, and here we go. So name, name now, who, now who, who were my hand raisers on uh, knowing CCK and adding fields to content types? You got, you got the K. This, um, it did, you know, no one did a CCK intro. Oh. Last year I did a CCK demystified, and then Rain did the views demystified, and together we demystified you all. Um, and then I'm, tomorrow I'm doing my advanced CCK in views, and you're going to have to pick up CCK on the fly. Okay, I'll try to spend 10 minutes running through some content. Who doesn't even know what CCK stands for? You don't even know. Yeah? All right, content construction kit, yeah. So this looks like a CCK interface, but it's not. If you know CCK, this is going to look a lot like it. If you don't know CCK... It won't. Um, so I can, add, I can add a field called uh, new field, you know, or, or I'll ask for your age. I'm about to ask for your age. And it's, um, they don't treat numbers different from text because uh, CCK does, but this does not. So text field, uh, it's mandatory, add it, and then I can, I can, I can I'll, I'll show you. No, I, I, rather than add that, I will uh, show you uh, nature of inquiry. I'll show you the configuration on that. Uh, nature of inquiry, default value, general, which is interesting because I didn't put a general option, so it leaves it blank. You have to choose something. Um, and uh, token values, I, I can grab values in from the URL and from other, you know, from post values and, and uh, get values. Um, cool stuff. Um, so I mean, it's, really, it's really simple. I mean, just, just just download web form, play with it. Um, it's it's a piece of content like anything else. When I go to create content and look at my list of content I can create, web form is one of them. Okay, so it, it, that's a node. And then everybody that submits uh, content, submits a uh, submission to that, just creates a record in the database. And where's that record found? Over here under the web forms uh, user interface uh, on the submissions option of any given form. And um, just because I'm having so much fun with it, I'm going to take one more look and see how, how you guys are doing. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you got some time. I'll uh, I'll I'll, I'll uh, get it done before tomorrow's. I'll do my make my decision before tomorrow's uh, last session. So um, so that's the web form module. Is that pretty cool? Menu block and web form. What you got over there? With web form and CCK, how do you create a business rule? 
Business rule? Rules. Rules and actions. Those would be some good modules to look over. Um, and to clarify, the CCK and web form are divorced. They have no relationship whatsoever. Not even, not even a slice. You can add really cool stuff in CCK all day long, but those things, what you see is what you get right here. Just those options that I showed you on the, um, on the, um, form components. You can, you can, you can download all the CCK modules you want, but this list right here is all you get. Uh, text field, text area, select, page break, etc. Business rules, like if someone chooses something and submits something, act upon that. Yeah? Prevent garbage. Well, okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, then we're going to talk about Mullum real quick. Who's never heard? Of, uh, who has heard of Mullum? Okay. Who's made the mistake of spelling it backwards? Exactly. M O L L O M. I like that one. I don't know. I usually get more laughter than that. Um, I'll, I'll just tell you briefly. Mullum is a um, spam defeating module. It's a subscription. Uh, it's actually it's free uh, for our use because. None of us in here are attracting so much attention and, and click-throughs um, and form submissions that we hit the limit. Um, it allows like some couple thousands of valid submissions through. It'll turn down bad submit for, um, you know, comment forms, web forms, uh, if people are trying to create user accounts. Um, it, it'll, it'll look through all the form submissions that you allow to your users, whether they're logged in or whether they're anonymous. And um, it, it keeps a catalog of known IPs that are issues. It keeps it looks out for uh, Viagra, Cialis, and different things of that nature. Um, now if your logged in user is saying, "Man, if I get one more, you know, Viagra spam mail, I'm going to go nuts," and they're and they're doing that in the context of a form on your site, obviously it knows the difference between your user complaining about Viagra spam versus someone trying to put those useless overseas pharmaceutical ads, you know, on your site. It's very intelligent. Uh, uh, Dries, our project founder, and uh, is the um, is the uh, owner of, uh, I think Mullen's its own company. It's uh, uh, Acquia pushes it heavily, but it's a separate little thing that Dries does. It's very intelligent. Um, every single f comment submission and form submission gets sent to the uh, Mullen server and checked. And you know, sure enough, you know, you're, you're the 17 millionth person, you know, that day. That's probably a high number. You're the 17 thousandth person that day to get that exact same comment spam. And it says, oh, "I'm not letting that go through." And there's a, there's a monitor. Um, that shows you how much spam has been rejected that day, and it's amazing. You can see it just ramp up. You know, they they had a spam fest. They were just hitting the world with spam, and you didn't get one of them. They all got failed. So the Mullum module is very nice. M O L L O M, and uh, you have to subscribe and get a, a key. And uh, again, uh, it lets a couple thousand valid submissions through. It'll turn down a million a day. But as soon as you get you know a couple thousand valid submissions a day, it'll it'll stop. And uh, and does anybody in here get thousands of comments and submissions to their sites? God love you if you do. No, okay, I'm I'm not that big either. So someday, you know, one of my goals in life is to is to make enough to get in the upper tax brackets. That's one of my goals. And then I also want to have enough activity on my site to have to pay for my mom. So I have I have growth goals and some reduction goals as well. I was rubbing my belly for those who can't see. Um, so that's, that's, that's some good stuff, yeah. Um, keeping it real, is anybody thinking of uh, a module they want to hear about before I go back to my list? Fine, I got my list. Admin role, I'm in love with admin role. Where did I use it last? Um, is it on my site? I'd be shocked if it is. Um, Here's the point. Looking at my permissions and my roles, there are my permissions. Okay, um, you only want to give people as much permission on your site as you want, right? But there are some times when you have, like, you know, your buddy or your team or whatever, and everybody needs kind of everybody kind of needs that level user one access, right? And in the past, we've shared user one. You know, here, here's user one account. So you got two, three, four, five, six people logging in as user one. And uh, everything gets tracked if you have tracking turned on. And if they're creating nodes, it all says submitted by you know user one admin. And then who logs in? You know the log roles show you know user one logged in, user two logged in, Fred, Curly, Mo, Larry. So so we're keeping track of everything. But if you have multiple development uh, team members all using user one credentials because they have to because they're enabling and they're configuring, and it's easier than trying to keep up with giving them permissions as a, as a non-user one. That's that's not so good. The idea would, here would be, um, in fact, I must maybe I do have it on. It was in your menu right above permissions. 
Yeah. Um, I'm in a role. Um, what happens here is you create a role called anything. Call it super user. Call it demigod. You know, call it um, you know, a cool person I really trust. Oh, I hope they don't hose me. Call it whatever you want to call it. And then, then make that selection here. And by default, that role, super user, that role will get access to every new module you, you install. You know, in, in, in days of old, you know, I'd give somebody um, a, a role and I'd, I'd let them have access to things. And they'd say, um, hey, I need you to install such and such. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. So um, I'll install it, and then I, I, I check it, and, and I installed it right, and it works fine. I'll say, hey, I installed that for you. They get back to me. I don't, I don't see the menu, the UI for it. I don't have access to it. And I'm like, what? Well, because i got to go to their user role, and i got to check that checkbox to give them access. The admin role module lets this automatically that person has things they can't do. They can do everything that user one can do except for run update.php, um, which you can turn that on as available to all people in your settings.php. And I think I did find one day one other thing that that, that can't do. Because they're not user one, they just have access to everything. And there's a difference. User one truly is the god user. So admin role is a good one. We've got 25 minutes. Um, image cache. Yeah, image, image cache is awesome. Let's go back to the Northwestern University Women's Board site. That gorgeous, just... I mean, it's hard for me to talk and, and stare at this gorgeous sight at the same time. And, um, and thank you for not leaving. But, um, and knowing where the snot your, U, your UIs are, is it over here in site? Oh, there it is, image cache. Okay, here's the idea. You want people to upload profile pictures. Or maybe you're running a recipe website and you want people to upload a picture of, uh, of the final product. Or a product review when you want to upload a picture, have them upload a picture of the product. Or you're running a photo gallery. There's a million reasons why people would be uploading photos to your website. Uh, Billy Bob's cheap camera puts up a, a 400K image. Peggy Sue's camera uploads a 2.6 meg, and uh, it's 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 twice the size of of the nicest monitor screens. So you know the image pulls up, and there's no it's just nothing but image. You're, you're like counting freckles on her nose because the image is just so big and ridiculous. And um, that's that's not that's not doable. Image cache allows us to set up. Presets uh, to scale and crop, and you can even sepia, make things black and white. You can flip them, you can saturate them, you can uh, slice and dice and mutilate. It's very nice. A um, hundred square, any image uploaded gets cropped to a hundred by a hundred. Okay, um, uh, that's that's going to scale and crop on that. In that case, let me make sure. Edit this. Um, What's interesting is um, when you upload an image, that that scaling and cropping is a, is available for that image. And, and in one of the five, and, and, in the hundred square directory, that image exists as a hundred square. In the two hundred square directory, the two hundred square. So it, it it makes that image available. Um, or better yet, you know what? Until it's called upon, the first time it's called upon, it does that. If there's no place on your site where you're rendering the two hundred square, then it doesn't exist. But when you say, "I'm going to make a gallery over here, a thumbnail gallery," it's going to be two hundred squares. Then eventually, throughout the course of time, as every every one of those images gets visited, it finally it finally converts them down. But um, and where here's a really cool trick. Um, I don't know where I do this. Um, let's go to content types, uh, profiles. What do we call them? Scholar bios, student bios, uh, display. So here's manage fields. Here's a here's a quick CCK. You know, since there's no CCK this week, apparently, um, here are all the fields of a student bio. bio. Um, students, there are there are scholars scholarships from the Northwestern University Women's Board, and um, we put in the current ones and the past ones, and then they roll off as the calendar year goes around, and then we put new ones in. Here is the image, student image, okay, and um, you upload the image, and again, you know, where's this image coming from, and and who's who, who's the person that week from the Women's Board whose job it is to put it up there, you know, and, and are they photoshopping it and putting are they what are they doing? They're just grabbing whatever they can get, and they ask. Maybe they ask the student, "Hey, send us an image for your profile." What are they going to send? Okay, too many variables, and you can't have variables in your in your environment like that. So um, now the display fields is where the magic happens. So what I say here is, on the student image, when you display this image, use this preset. If you don't have image cache installed, there are no options here. The very image they uploaded. 2.6 meg or 400k 
is uh, is what whatever they upload is what you get. What you upload is what you get. But here I have that same list you saw earlier with a, with a little bit more added to it as well. Uh, on the 200 wide image, um, when you look at the at a, at a student's bio, a student bio, it's just the image. But it could be the image 200 by 200 that when you click links to the actual uploaded image. So if it's if it's 2.6 meg, then when you click the image, it'll go boom, and you'll be scrolling left and right and up and down to, to see the whole face, right? Um, or to the node, I'm sorry, I had the image linked to the node. So if you click on that, it goes to the bio page. Um, or it could be linked to image. So on this one is when you would click it and it would show you the whole full 2 meg. Um, uh, linking to the file path. Um, and to download it. And or just uh, showing you the URL. I don't even know what that means. So I'm going to get out of there. Yeah, I, I'm always using live sites for these demos. I'm always afraid someday I'm going to... Huh? What? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I must have changed that when I was doing a presentation in LA. I'm sorry. I'll put it back. Get a get a support call for that. So, so you so that's a great question. You know, you're making those presets and you're applying these filters. When does it come into play? It comes into play here, and it also comes into play in your view. When you look at the um, scholarship page, and you look at the bio, student bios. Here's uh, Hannah. Hello, Hannah. You're uh, you're being broadcast on National Camtasia TV here. Um, I'm going to edit my view. Who saw the um, views demystified today? Yeah, all right. You all should have seen that. Um, so here's the um, here's the student the student image, right? And it already tells me it's 125 wide image. And if I look at those settings, and I drop down to the bottom at the format, I have all these options again. So when I make this view, and what's this view look like? This view renders uh, this view renders 10 uh, student bios um, in a vertical alignment. Um, and I'll just go back to the page and look at it. I've got to cancel that first. And then I've got to cancel that. So it shows this dimension of image. And I can guarantee these are not the same size. Now this one here was not as tall as this one. So when it went to crop it, there was some extra space at the bottom. And that's going to happen. That's going to happen. So in that, in that respect, you don't get true uniformity. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to restrict people from sending in images that are a certain height. And I decided in this case, for usability purposes, I'm not going to impose, you know, I, I don't want one of these nice ladies from the Northwest University Women's Board to have to contact um, Anna or Kelly and say, oh, oh, sorry, could you send me an image in that's, that's about, you know, maybe half that big in one direction or the other and trying to explain that, right? So I didn't get true uniformity in this case, but we can if we need to. Image cache questions over there. I noticed that uh, my default you have the 200 wide, and then you had hidden. That way, somebody can't post wrong figures like this. The hidden is for a different purpose, okay. and I'm glad you brought it up. That's that's a CCK question. Uh, he observed that over here on content uh, types, on the bios, on the display fields, on the uh, image. Is that the image right there? Oh, I'm, I'm not, I didn't want to edit it. Um, the student image, okay. He noticed that um, the, the label is what's hidden. The label is a student image or something. And when you see a person's face, you're probably going to assume that's the student's image. So having student image label was, was not worth it. So that's what the hidden is for there. Um, now, I can also exclude the image from the node page. Because what I showed you was the view. The, the scholarship bio is a list of multiple students. That's a list view. That's what views is for. And there's never really a functionality. There's never a link to Anna's bio node page because there's just no, there's no, you know, her page, her information is right there in that list. And, and as she becomes a, a previous, a former scholar and new ones take her place, she'll be in the past scholars section still in the list. So truth be told, there's no way to get, if you know her node number, you could find it and randomly guess it. But but if I did have a page just for her and I wanted my users to navigate to it, I could exclude her picture with this exclude. And this, this falls into the tips and tricks portion. I could exclude this image from the node when it renders. And then I can create a view that shoves her image off into the sidebar. I can create a block display in a view uh, and show me the image field of the current node based on the URL arguments I could spend some time on that. So, so and if I did, if I showed it over here and showed it here, it'd be there twice. So I can exclude it from the node view 
and then render it somewhere else. Or maybe I use that, that data for something else in another part of my site, and it's just never, ever relevant to have it on her node page. So that's the exclude, and that's the, the um, label hidden. Now, the current scholar, yes or no, shows above, but I don't show the current scholar on the view, and they never see the node, so that's, that's irrelevant too. So that was a little bit of a rabbit. Uh, any more questions on image cache or uh, display fields? Okay. Um, who wants to see me add a field with CCK, Content Construction Kit? I better do that. I've got 16 minutes, and I might, I might let me take a look at my list. Um, Pre-populate module, real quick. Pre-populate module. Go take a look at it. It allows you to um, to uh, in, to formulate a URL and a link. Uh, a link. <laughs> when you formulate links on your site, you can say uh, site.com slash contact dash Doug Van. Right. That's my that's my contact form. Then I can say um, bracket um, what is it? Bracket edit bracket, and, and I can I can pre-populate some of the fields. In, in that form based on the page you're on. So I can have a link to my contact form from various different pages. And I can have a hidden field in that in that web form that you don't see, but it just tells me which which page you were on. And I should do that. That'd be that'd be that'd be some good data. You know? On what page did you suddenly get this awestruck idea to come send me some something, you know, a request. So the pre-populate module lets you hide information, quote unquote it's it's right there in the URL. Everybody can see it. But um it, it takes that information and it pre-populates. So a node ad form, if someone's going to create a recipe or create um, a product review or whatever, you can put bracketed uh, stuff in the URL on, on, the, on the link that's saying, you know, click here to create a product review, click here to create whatever. You can um, take dynamic information and shove it into the URL and it'll pre-populate the fields. So it's, it's very handy. Josh Brower, who's here this weekend, who did the uh, Designed Online in 15 minutes, and he's also doing the uh, Death by Laura Mipsum, he maintains this module. Let's add a field in CCK. And where's my site now? Okay. And uh, I have a couple content types I use. I, I keep around just for this purpose. Uh, let's do some Chuck. Content type. Where's, where's, there he is. Uh, I, I was teaching Chuck how to use CCK, and I'll share what I shared with him with you. Um, so creating a content type at all, uh, here's, here's all my content types. Okay, these are, I mean, a lot of these are tests because I keep on using my live site for demonstrations. These are so a blog, that's my real blog. Forums, I was showing off the forum module. Forums are very simple. Uh, gal, gallery, I was showing somebody to use a gallery. Uh, gal image, etc. Um, product, I have Ubercart installed, I was showing somebody to use Ubercart. Uh, stickers is part of the Ubercart. Story comes out of core. Uh, t shirts is part of Ubercart. Web form is the web form module. Chuck. NPR. So ch the Chuck module, the Chuck content type, uh, you can create new ones all the time. Add content type. This is why I have so much crap on my site, man. I just keep on putting stuff up for them. So the name of the content type is LA. The type is a, is a, is a toot. It's a tutorial. Okay. Um, better yet, you know what? I, don't, I need to stop being so abstract. Um, product review. Did I have one of those already? Type uh, is also product. Now one of these is machine readable only. So product underscore review. Okay. So one's the name that you see when you say, you know, add new content. The other one's for the machine to use. And I'll let you read those help text on your, on your own. Uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm letting people create content on my site, this is my opportunity in the description field to give them something that this is, create this content under these circumstances, or this is what kind of content this is. So explain, explain to them. This is, this is new purchases only, not for used, used gear, whatever, whatever your, your product review. Um, whatever your uh, stipulations are, so save. Okay, actually, submission form settings. By by default, all the content in Drupal is title and body only. Okay, um, if you're going to do a product review, things you may want to know. You know, where did you buy it? You know, when did you buy it? Um, what did you pay for it? Um, you know, what, what what was the retail price? Was it on sale? Um, did you did you you know was is uh, was a warranty extended warranty an option? You know, different questions you want to ask. If if you ask them to put all that in the body of the um, of the email, of the post, then you can't do searches like um, you know show me all purchases that uh, were bought in this month or this year. Show me all purchases that were bought with uh, all product reviews of products that were um, that they also bought a warrant extended warranty on it because it's just it's just a piece of information that may or may not be in the bot in the in this one body area 
So we want to separate it out. But the, the title, um, we could call that product title, right? A, a little more semantic than just title. And body is going to be product description. Or product review sounds even better. I've done this example before. Uh, minimum number of words. I don't impose a minimum number of words. Hopefully they're going to be mature and not say, liked it. But um, but if, if that's a concern to you, you know it's got to be at least 25 words. And then tell them that, too. Otherwise, they're going to submit 20, didn't get it 22, didn't get it 24, and they're going to keep on gaming it until they find out what it is. Tell them what it is. Explanation or subscription of the guidelines. Tell them what you want them to, to, to you know, what do you want your users to submit in this? Um, we, don't, we don't want emails or phone calls or people stopping you in the hallways. Tell them what you want them to put into the product review field. It's, really, it's still the body field, but we're calling it a different name now. Um, image attached settings. Um, other modules I have installed are giving me other options here. Vertical tabs. This form would be way long um, without vertical tabs. Um, I have oh, I see. I got to do SEO though. I got 11 minutes. Okay. Um, meta tag setting. Um, I can have them generated automatically or give them the opportunity to create them themselves. Five star rating. Um, is, you know, is five star rating an option for this uh, content? Or, you know, comment settings. By default, all comments are disabled. I'm not having people comment on the product reviews. Or, read write, people can comment on this once it's published. Um, page title is another SEO module. I won't go into input formats. Um, if I choose uh, full HTML, or that, that's allowed, um, full HTML, then they're going to get the WYSIWYG editor. Uh, here's workflow settings. By default, it's going to be published. As soon as they save it, it's going to be published. No, thank you. I want to moderate these. And promoted the front page is not uh, relevant on my side. Attachments are disabled. There's no reason to attach a file to this product review. If there was a reason for it, I'd turn it on. Um, and then printer and email is not uh, not relevant for it, per se. So I'm going to save this. And I've created the human readable name. Product review is already taken. Oh, lovely. Product review. I'll make it plural. So I have done this example before. Okay. And that's what I get for using my live site for demos all the time. So this is creating a content. You can do this with Drupal core. Okay, we haven't used CCK yet. But when you see product reviews down here, right there, product reviews, now the manage fields option, the only reason the manage fields option is there is because I have CCK installed. In Drupal 7, fields are in core. CCK, if you will, is in core. The idea of adding fields to any content type is in core. So by default, here's my product title, formerly known as title. Menu settings, if I give somebody the option to create menus, which I'm not going to do, my users are just going to, then there's going to be this little, that little box of, you know, uh, what's it a child of, and, and different kinds of things like that. Uh, the product review itself, formerly known as body. Meta tags, and different, if I turn off the meta tags module, node words module, that is no longer an option. I can move them around and drag them around upside down. Comment settings, etc. So I want to add, um, you know, price. Price, price paid. Price paid. Um, what? No, somebody help me out here. What's what, what kind of a field is this going to be? Decimal. decimal sounds good. Alrighty, decimal sounds good. I could just make it a text field, but decimal is going to give me a. I can do more. I can do more things with that later on. And now I have. Uh, what's what's the best option here? Text field again. A select list would be okay. You can choose from five, ten, or fifteen dollars. Well, that's that. That's not going to be good. Uh, check boxes and radio boxes. No. Um, yes or no. You paid for it. Or you didn't. No. Text field, obviously. So I'm now adding a field. Uh, the price they paid is no longer going to be buried in the body where I can't access it. You know, show me the reviews of all the products that um, uh, that some that were over a hundred bucks or over two hundred bucks. You know, I, I can't do that if, the, if unless the information's. Uh, I need to put an underscore. This has got to be uh, all underscore and no spaces. You're actually you're actually creating database tables and database uh, um, columns, fields, and the name of the field in this case is going to be field price paid. And they want you to give it its own name. Not they don't want to assume a name for it because um, you may have a convention to the way you name your fields, and you may be writing modules that interacts with the database, so they let you have control. Drupal. Is hard. Drupal is complicated. You, you open up a user interface and there's options from top to bottom and left to right because at the end of the day, we can do whatever we want with it. 
that's why it's harder than WordPress and Joomla. I come from Joomla. I spent years there. I was involved in a very expensive Joomla project, extremely expensive Joomla project, when we jumped ship and went to Drupal under my advisement. Uh, price paid, helper text. You know, let them know, you know, USD or let them know, uh, let them know what you're talking about. Um, default value is not relevant. Required, yeah, I got to know. I got to know what it costs. A number of values, hopefully you only paid one price for it. You maybe got ripped off. Minimum, minimum, maximum, not so much. You know, um, precision, precision and scale. The total number of digits in store to store in the database, including those to the right of the decimal. Fascinating. So um, you may put a limit on that. And so if you wanted to, you could. Okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, the decimal marker. It could be a comma or a space. Do other languages use commas and spaces? Somebody's. What language uses comma for that? European does? Okay, there you go. So, uh, you know, Drupal is not an American product. It's an international product. Uh, what's a good prefix for this? Currency sign? Okay, in this case, we're going to have a specific leaning. This is American product review site. What's a good suffix? Suffix. USD. USD. So, so, when, um, so when this is being rendered on the screen... Here's Billy Bob's product review of an iPad. He paid five nine nine, um, and uh, it's going to have a string and a USD on it, and that's going to be default. So up here, I'm going to say, you know, enter your uh, money in USD, please, because um, if they get screwy with that, they're going to have some very strange, you know, it's going to blow off my calculations later on when I go to make lists of all this. Um, allowable values. If I was doing the uh, select select list or the checkbox radio buttons or checkboxes, I could have you know five, ten, fifteen, twenty, but that's not relevant for what we're doing. We're not offering a checkbox or a select box or a list or a radio list. So why is the field there? It's not relevant. I'm sorry. Drupal gives you a lot of options and doesn't necessarily restrict the option when it's not relevant to your current settings, right? You know what what color is Tuesday? Well, wow, Tuesdays don't have colors. What are the allowed values of a text field with the, with the user supplying all the data? That's not relevant, and I'm sorry. They're, they're, you know, Drupal's hard, but it's better. Uh, PHP code. Um, if, if allowed values is a, is a valid option for what you're doing, radio checkboxes, you can write a little script in here that grabs information from another database or from some web service or your own database and give them options based on some logical criteria of your own. You can put 100 lines of code or just a couple little snippets of something here, and it, and it will dynamically populate the, the allowed values, the checkboxes, the radio boxes, the select list. Well, that sounds hard, too. I mean, now, now you got to know PHP. I'm not apologizing for that one. That's just cool. So, um, and, and I sprinkle those comments in there because I think they're, they're you know, we need to handle the objections of the naysayers, and we need to embrace the complexity. Oh, I got to start that one. That's embracethecomplexity.com. That's awesome. I got to start some of that. Embrace the complexity of Drupal because it rocks. So now I have a price paid a price paid field, but do I really? Let's put it towards the top. Because that's the most important thing I want to know. What did you pay for that? What that set you back? You give them because you know, you're jealous they have this thing. Huh, what did that put you back? Um, so let's go to content, create content. I've got three minutes since CC came. And um, content, uh, create content, uh, product reviews. Oh my goodness. We have used Content Construction Kit to create a, a price paid field that is required. And the formatting wanks when you're adding the form, but when you render it, it's pretty. And if not, you can theme it. Go to one of the theming sessions and figure that one out. Make things left float if you must, and this is way too big. I mean, I'm a, I mean, this isn't even, this isn't it's not big enough for the national debt. Sorry, and uh, and and every party is spending our money, folks. Don't don't read me wrong, um, but it's too big for what we're doing here. So you can shrink that down too. But uh, that's content construction kit. Okay, there are tons of modules that I would have talked about. EM field, uh, view field creates a new content type where you can plug a view. Into your content, into your into your content type. Um, uh, view uh, em field lets you plug in uh, ultimately a, a YouTube URL. It'll go grab the whole thing and put a YouTube player just on the URL. 
Question over here. So, so back to the forms view versus content creation kit and, and et cetera. If you wanted to grab 10 pieces of data, store it in the database, and use it later, how would you decide? Use it later. Web form can't use it later. I can create views of, of product reviews, views of blog posts, recipes, uh -huh. um, views of user profiles all day long. I can sprinkle them in. Uh, but I, can, I, I can never access UCCK, UCCK right? Web form. Web form is only for like when you want some information mailed out to people. You know, a little contact, a little contact form for a contest like this. That's awesome. I don't need a node for everybody's submission. I just need a place I can get it. So, so, so content. When you WhiteHouse.gov, uh, Monty Python, um, Britney Spears to Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, the King of Jor Queen of Jordan, all those Drupal sites, um, Warner Brothers, all of them, everything you're looking at is nodes. So you, I can't render a form submission, web form submission to my page. That's not a navigable thing. So only CCK makes nodes, and only you can prevent forest fires. That stream of consciousness, folks. One minute for Q&A. Q&A on CCK, okay. Thank you much. Thank you much. I am Doug Van. Please uh, grab my business card over here. I'm available for training you individually or your corporation. Check out the SEO checklist module on your own. It does nothing but show you all the SEO modules you don't have installed yet. And then it checks them off for you as you start installing them. And um, it's, it's really awesome. And if you're not, I mean, Drupal out of the box is SEO cool. But if you want to go SEO awesome, put a little effort into it. And then you couldn't do any more than checking out the uh, Drupal for SEO uh, book by Ben Finkley of Velocity. Good folks there. Check me out at DougVan.com. Thank you for coming to my session.